Big Paulie's Pro the Sports Sims proudly presents Grand Slam Wrestling. It is the next two in a series of circuit qualifiers that we have been streaming for you these last few weeks. And tonight we are going to do Tampa and the old Detroit circuit. Remember that these pairings were set before Detroit merged with the Minnesota circuit. And with that, I bid you all welcome. My name is Big Polly, and we are going to do two matches for you. We're going to surprise you with who the finalists are uh, when we reveal the screen to you where these matches will be held. Uh, Tampa, of course, you could probably imagine this being at the old Fort Homer Hesterly Armory, where the old CWF convened on Tuesday nights in Tampa. Of course, they went all over the state each and every week. And I can imagine Detroit using the Kobo Arena uh, for their matches, which is the backdrop, uh, backdrop that I use for GSW. So let's get on and show you what has happened in the uh, matches leading up to this. Let's first show you the roll call of champions. It has not changed. Uh, since we were with you last, nothing happened in Calgary uh, that caused titles to change. And we will show you who has made the final 18 so far with Tampa and Detroit to be played tonight. So we have a whole bunch of two seats so far. And we have a six seed, uh, Gory Guerrero, who won in, Mon in Montreal before, after he moved to Houston. He is now in the Houston circuit. And speaking of two seeds, let's show you what has taken place and show you the two finalists in uh, that will be uh, one of them will be representing the Tampa circuit and the other will be going home, brother. And there you see them, Hulk Hogan and Jack Briscoe are going to represent, uh, going to battle it out. They they um, have rarely met in GSW, but they did meet a couple of times, to my recollection, in year one. And due to title consolidation, at least in one instance, and Hogan won one match and Briscoe won the other, to the best of my recollections. So we're going to go on and we're going to play out this match for you. And then we will come back and play the Detroit Finals. But let's first recap what has happened in the 16-man uh, Tampa tournament plus a 13-man uh, battle royal to determine the 16th seed. And the winner, surprisingly enough, was Brad Armstrong. Armstrong beat out Kushida, Rick Gibson, Al Perez, Waldak Sabisco, Alex Shelley, King Curtis Iakea, Rocky Johnson, Russia Kimura, Pax Song, Iron Sheik, again did poorly, Stanislaus Sabisco, and the preliminary Alibaba. So in the first round, so far in this tournament, every high seed has either has, has either won or drawn to advance. Lex Luger over Ron Fuller in 643 with a corner maul. Larry Sabisco over his fellow heel, Dan Miller, uh, on a draw. But Sabisco, who got cut open in the match, which would play a pivotal role in his future progress, uh, advances for being the highest seed. So, you know, you got to have a good performance outside the tournament to get those higher seeds and to advance. Daniel Bryan over Bob Orton Sr. and a couple of technically baby faces, although Orton Sr. was acting a bit heelish. Bryan won by DQ. Gorilla Monsoon and Buzz Sawyer, a couple of baby faces, went to a double countout. Monsoon advanced. Rick Steiner over Ricky Steamboat, a very good 30-minute draw, got a 3-0 rating. And it was Steiner advancing based on him being a four seed and Steamboat uh, not wrestling too much as a single, putting all of his efforts with his tag team partner, Jay Youngblood, who they, they are now currently the world tag team champions. Kevin Sullivan over Greg Gagne. Gagne? Was Sully by pin with a pile driver late in that bout. Jack Briscoe over Ox Baker. Hulk Hogan ending the Cinderella run rather quickly for Brad Armstrong. We move to the quarterfinals. It was Rick Steiner over Gorilla Monsoon. Steiner winning by countout. A double DQ. So Sully advances over Daniel Bryan. Jack Briscoe over Larry Sabisco. Very quickly, Oklahoma roll in just 138 seconds. Hulk Hogan over Lex Luger. Luger was a tweener in this bout. But Hulk had no trouble with him. A leg drop felled uh, the total package at 13 and 53. 
to our semifinals. It was Briscoe over Kevin Sullivan in a rather quick bout. Ox Baker was interfering uh, in this bout, not realizing that if Baker injured Briscoe, it actually would help Hulk Hogan out. Hogan had little trouble with Rick Steiner, 15.02, a clothesline. In fact, Hulk has not lost uh, in year four. He is 9-0. and Briscoe is 3-0-1. Uh, coming into tonight's bout, tonight's finals. This is actually the fourth bout for both men. We'll zoom in a little closer here. Uh, Brendan Baker, this is for you. If you're wondering where the trade hold recommendations are and how they work, it uh, and I was I responded to your um, uh, your query uh, earlier this afternoon. It basically keeps uh, trade hold recommendation basically keeps illogic out of the match. Like, for instance, if Briscoe was wrestling Andre the Giant, Briscoe's not going to be able to body slam him. So if body slam was one of his moves in his arsenal, obviously Jack wouldn't try it, and this, that would prevent Jack from trying it. And the trade hold recommendations, you go underneath the timer, and it is down and to the right uh, of the timer here. And I'll just show you the trade recommendations I have for this match. And let me back out just a little bit to show you. There we go. Uh, both men are going to switch the moves around a little bit. Hogan uh, going to move a power move instead of a ropes move and a leg hold instead of a pin hold. And Jack ropes to speed move, pile driver to arm hold. So with that, we're going to get this match underway. And then actually I am taping this April 20th. I'm going to tape the Detroit final on the 21st. And we will meld the two parts together and give you a presentation uh on time on Wednesday night. So off we go, Hogan and Briscoe. Hogan, of course, was probably a, a spectator at the Fort Homer Hesterly Armory back when he was a college student at USF when Briscoe was the world champ uh, from 73 to late 75. And off we go. Tournament DQ rules are set, so both these guys could be lenient. Although you can see disqualifications and countouts with this kind of match. So we will back out again and show you the tail of the tape. Vogg thinks that uh, Jack Briscoe will win. We're using Wrestling's Finest version 3, by the way. And I was very uh, thankful to Al Red Sox fan for allowing me to chat with Tom Vogel. I have never spoken to Tom nor Al prior to that night, and we have that on the channel in the uh, Chats with Others playlist, I think it is. And we I also did a chat with Dave Gardner over weekend last. So off we go, Hogan and Briscoe. Hogan only needs a draw. Briscoe needs a win. We start with illegal punches by Briscoe, and Briscoe could be a sneaky heel when he wants to be, and that's five off of Hogan's stamina. Hogan has a 55-6. Briscoe at 81-4, so he's going to have the stamina edge, so Hogan will have to put him away quick. We have a cut already on Hogan's left eye, so Hogan at a minus 22 cut, and his damage is already down to minus 42. So Briscoe not messing around with Hogan, who has won all nine matches he's been in in year four. Suplay attempt countered, and Hogan now responds in kind with illegal punches, and that's not going to get it done. Disqualify check. Nope. Face break. Hulkster applies it to Briscoe, and that's five off of his stamina. Auto control loss. Legal speed move. Legal chop by Jack. And a headlock by Briscoe. Pin hold by Briscoe. And he doesn't get it there. And Hulk already down a stamina level. And we're not even five minutes into the bout. Body slam. Countered. Hogan was expecting it. Kick to the head. Jack Briscoe. That's a, that's a move in the repertoire I didn't know Hogan had. Suplay attempt. And he gets Hogan. Ten points off of his stamina. Briscoe way ahead at this point. Another suplay attempt. Another ten points off. No pin. Briscoe is the two seed. Hulkster is the one seed. Hulk trying to become the first one seed to win one of these circuit tournaments. Body slam, and Hogan gets Briscoe. Slams him hard to the canvas. No pin. Kick by Briscoe. And I have this set. I don't have Vogue set up for this. Okay. Uh, 
So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to do something on the fly here and you and just play as Briscoe. Did I set Hogan? I did. So we're just going to try to keep the strategy cards in advance. Oklahoma roll. No. Let's you let's look at the strategy cards. I don't usually let the I usually let the computer play it, but you know what? This this will be a good way to show you the strategy cards, which are call for outside help anytime. Oops, I accidentally played it. Now see, it shows you my unfamiliarity with, uh, maybe Jerry is in the audience. Uh, you may try for an illegal pin attempt. Briscoe using the ropes. No. So Briscoe, as he would often do as NWA champ, so after a special hold, a successful hold, use a specialty hold. I'm not going to use my cards right away. He's got two of those cards. Another successful hold, use specialty hold. Outside ring chart. After a successful hold. Yeah, he's got a lot of good strategy cards. And I don't need to use them yet because I'm way ahead. Okay, going to use punches. We'll keep the pressure on Hogan and try to get him rattled. We're just, we're just going to... Play it as it lays and strategize for Jack here. You know, I could strategize for him and I could lose, too. A legal forearm, body slam. And I'm not planning on using the specialty holds just yet. I think Jack's lost the stamina level and I think Hogan has lost one, too. Legal choking by Hogan. No action, no action. Auto control laws. Fan interaction. So the fans kind of go into the Hulkster. He's a real American, you know. Legal punches by Hogan. Arm holds used by Hogan. Specialty moves, slam and leg drop. And it's a miss. Legal chop by Briscoe. Now I'm going to use one of these uh, specialty holds here, if I can. It was countered by Hogan, so curses. I'm still up on strategy cards 4-2. to two. Illegal choking by Briscoe. So this will add an extra dimension, playing as Jack. Hogan, leg drop, countered. So Briscoe way ahead of him at this point. He's at minus 45 and Hulk is at minus 130. Legal elbow. Legal elbow. Legal whip to the ropes. No action. And I'm up two cards. So we're going to use especially hold again after a successful hold. Especially move. Oklahoma roll. No. So I'm not planning on using any more strategy cards for a while yet. I want Hogan to use his. Speed move. Punches. And Hogan is in for a very long night if the match stays, uh, continues this way. Yes, he's lost another stamina level. He's going through stamina like you wouldn't believe. He's getting blown up. Pin hold by Briscoe. This, this match is going Briscoe's way. Legal throw. No. Body slam by the Hulkster, and Briscoe will counter. I'll kick out of that. Legal punches. Kick by Briscoe. Pin hold. And maybe Briscoe can beat him without using the strategy cards. Briscoe way ahead at this point, up 110 points, and Hogan has a cut. Legal power move by Hulk. Legal knee by Hulk. Arm hold by Hulk. And Briscoe has lost another stamina level. We're 21-33. And you got to think the longer this match goes, it will go Briscoe's way. Legal whip to the ropes. Disqualify check on Hogan. He uses arm holds to get out of it. Power move by the Hulk. Body slam. Specially move. Slam and a leg drop. Ah, oh, curses. The Hulkster beat me. He's the first number one seed to advance. Briscoe pinned to 23.51, and the holster now 10-0 and 0 in year number four. So, oh well, well, we tried, and I wasn't expecting, I forgot that I didn't check off uh, Briscoe uh, being used by the computer, but we managed, we adapted, and holster now moves on to the final 18. He will be one of the final 18 representatives of the Monarch of the Met tournament, and with that, we will head to our next match. And now on to match number two tonight. As you can see, we have updated the uh, 
tournament winners with Hulk Hogan winning in Tampa. We move on now to the Detroit tournament and we are ready for the finals of this tournament and we have had a few surprises in this including a brand new international champion. We will get to it in a moment but let me introduce to you the finalists Nikita Koloff and Freddie Blassie the classy one made it to the final and we'll go over what happened. In the Battle Royal, a six-man Battle Royal for the 16 seed, it was Jim Neidhart winning over Masahiro Chono Akabono way back in the pack. Butch Reed in the first round over Uncle Elmer, nine beating an eight. Danny Davis shocked Buddy Rogers. Haystacks Calhoun had a fit of rage against Mark Lewin. Lewin won by DQ, but an injury sustained by Lewin is going to knock him out five weeks, and he was out of the rest of the tournament. Freddie Blassie in his first round stunned everybody by beating a heavily favored Sandor Zabo, even though Zabo was a 12 seed. It was his debut match, and everybody thought he was highly skilled. Whipper Billy Watson upset Chris Adams on the Canuck Commando at 29 minutes. Wild Bill Lungson and Edward Carpentier went to a 30-minute draw, so Lungson automatically advanced for being the higher seed. Nikita Koloff easily over Barry O., in his debut, and it was Dick the Bruiser being unseated by Jim Neidhart. The first time in this tournament we've had a 16 beat a 1 in the first round, and with the GSW rules, with uh, championships being in play in the tournament, Jim Neidhart is now your international champion. Uh, so he will go on the road, and when his reign is over with, I'm sure he's going to set up shop in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, for as long as he would like to. So that reduced the field to seven with Lewin injured, Mark Bill, uh, no, Mark Lewin injured, Wild Bill Lungson got a bye. In the other three quarterfinals, Freddie Blassie over Whippy, Whipper Billy Watson, Nikita Koloff over Danny Davis in a battle of baby faces, and Jim Neidhart took the belt and ran. Butch Reed advanced, won by countout, but did not win the title, so Neidhart... Uh, will hit the road as international champion and Reed advanced to the semis. In those semifinals, Nikita Koloff defeated Wild Bill Lungson 22-41 and Blassie over Butch Reed who forgot the count outside the ring. Blassie won by count out. We used Butch Reed's 84 babyface card for the tournament. And that brings us to our Detroit finals. One fall 60 minutes. If it's a draw or if it's some sort of double, double count out, double DQ, Nico, uh, Koloff will advance as the Detroit representative. Uh, Koloff comes in 6-1-0 and in year four, and Blassie also on a hot streak thanks to the tournament. He's 4-3-1. and one. So, on we go. I don't think either man has been champion in GSW in the four years I've been doing this. We'll look at the trade holds, and we will mark them accordingly, like so. I'll set up my uh, tight angle here, and we'll start the match. You'd have to be a better shot at picking lottery numbers than predicting how this one will go. So the computer thinking this one is going to be pretty close to even. This is a minus 10 setting on the tournament DQ rules. So the referee will use leniency, but a DQ or a count out is not beyond the realm of possibility here. We get the match started. Koloff has a 64-5 stamina, Blassie a 74-5 stamina. So stamina-wise, these two should be about similar. No action to start off the first move of the match. Blassie had control. Goes to Koloff. Legal whip to the ropes into the turnbuckles. Blassie went and no pin. No action. Legal choking by Koloff. Especially move coming up a power slam. Koloff likes to use the power moves. And Blassie's stamina goes down another 13. He is now down 27 already. A body slam by Koloff. Legal punches by Koloff. Koloff has control. By the way, we're using the babyface card for Koloff, the heel card for Blassie. And Blassie shoulder blocks Koloff off the ring apron, and he falls to the arena floor, and that is a 10-point loss. Legal neck hold by Blassie. Blassie's going to go for a big move. The netbreaker, the netbreaker, who uh, he's already 
scored some victories in GSW with that, and it was countered by Nikita. Nikita with the whip to the ropes, illegal punches, and a low blow. Both these guys won. I mean, just misses getting the pin. It was a five on that three-count roll. He needed a four or lower. Especially move the sickle, but this time Blassie just ducks out of the way last second. Kick by Blassie, body slam by Koloff. Actually, both moves were countered. Legal leg hold by Blassie, a pile driver by Blassie. Foot on the ropes for Koloff, and it wasn't seen, but he kicked out anyway. Low blow, and biting by Blassie. Blassie likes to sharpen up those teeth of his, and dig into the uh, opponent's forehead with it. Much to the uh, uh, displeasure of Japanese fans when he was touring over there, some of them uh, fainting, having heart attacks, and so forth, when they saw that. Face rake by Blassie. A kick by Koloff countered. A kick by Blassie was not countered. And right now we're at minus 59 and minus 62. Both of these men about to hit, uh, hit a stamina level. Throat chop. That does not get it done. No action. Lassie going for the specially moved neck breaker. This could be it, and it is. So very quickly, Fred Lassie, the five seed, is going to go through to the Det uh, to the final 18, winning the Detroit Circuit Tournament, even though there is no longer a Detroit Circuit, at least for now. Koloff pinned at 10:15, and Freddie Lassie will advance. We know Hulk Hogan will get a bye um, into the round of 16, not 18, 16. We'll have two first round bouts and then we'll have the round of 16. And then uh, for the pay-per-view or the super card in St. Louis, we start with the original eight, uh, the final eight and play down to a winner. So Blassie advances. And I hope you enjoyed tonight's pair of matches that we have brought you. This has been Big Polly coming to you, wishing you well. Godspeed and God bless. We'll do it all again soon, and bye-bye for now, everybody.